हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज अवर लेक्चर नंबर टू इन मॉडर्न फिजिक्स एंड टुडे वी विल डिस्कस द माइकलसन मोल एक्सपेरिमेंट फॉर डिफरेंट वेव्स वी नीड ए मीडियम फॉर ट्रेवलिंग फॉर साउंड वेव्स वी नीड सम एयर और गैस मॉलिक्यूल्स फॉर वाटर वेव्स वी नीड वाटर टू मूव फॉर द रिपल्स एंड लाइट इज ऑल्सो ए वेब इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेब and it have some electric field and magnetic field vectors perpendicular and because the light is coming from sun to earth and there is some empty space or vacuum between the sun and earth so how the light was traveling from sun to earth so it was assumed that there is some hypothetical medium which was name uh, named as luminiferous ether or simply ether as since uh, light have wave nature so it was argued that how light travels in empty space or in vacuum and therefore a hypothetical propagation medium was introduced at that time and it was called the luminiferous ether or just ether and it is filled everywhere in universe and the properties of the ether is that it was assumed to be weightless transparent frictionless and it is undetectable chemically or physically and it have very low density so that all the planets and everything is moving through it without loss of energy and it is highly elastic even light have such high velocity it can pass through this ether and ether was proposed as an absolute reference frame in which the speed of light was constant and from which other measurements could be made so it was assumed as the absolute frame of reference and the michelson morley uh, experiment was an attempt to show the existence of ether in 1887 michelson along with morley performed an experiment to measure the absolute velocity of earth through ether so the aim of this experiment was to prove the existence of the stationary frame of reference means ether frame and the principle of this experiment is that it works on the basis of interference of light or principle of interference of light and the apparatus was uh, used as interferometer it was designed by michelson to measure the very small phase difference between two light waves traveling in mutually perpendicular direction and interferometer is a device to measure the interference pattern and this is the michelson interferometer michelson have used two mirrors m1 and m2 in perpendicular direction and a light source was used monochromatic source was there and a partially silver mirror or glass plate was used which can work as a mirror as well as a just transparent plate so some part will be reflected to mirror m2 and some part will be transmitted to mirror m1 and for reflecting part it is covering some extra distance that's why a compensatory compensatory plate was used of same a uh, similar plate was used uh, so that the path uh, in this vertical and horizontal path will be equal so uh, the Mike michelson interferometer it it measure the interference pattern between the reflected ray from mirror m1 and reflected ray from mirror m2 and they get some kind of interference pattern here because of the time difference in the horizontal and vertical path so we will calculate what what is the time t1 and t2 in horizontal and vertical path and in horizontal case because uh, the light is moving one time with the motion of earth earth is moving in this direction and one time in the opposite of the motion of earth so one time it will be c plus b and c minus b according to gaussian transformation equation and for vertically also the time will be t2 
so we will calculate this time difference and that's why there will be uh, a phase difference and which will create some kind of uh, interference pattern on the screen or detector so there experiment this was the interferometer which was used for the measurement and if uh, this whole setup was rotated by 90 degree so they they have got interference pattern when uh, in this uh, uh, first configuration when mirror one m1 is here mirror m2 is here and the motion of earth is in this direction but when they rotated it by 90 degree then this horizontal mirror m1 becomes the vertical mirror and m2 which was vertical which is now horizontal mirror so they were expecting some total time uh, difference uh, to get a phase shift of 0.4 fringes after the rotation so according to calculation they were expecting some kind of uh, change in 0.4 fringes uh, from the first configuration to second when they have rotated it whole setup by 90 degree so we will calculate the time difference in horizontal and vertical paths uh, before the rotation and after the rotation and then we will see the total time difference and this time difference will create some kind of path difference and this path difference will create some change in the fringes and it was it should come 0.4 fringe but they never get it so just we will see the calculation part also for the vertical path because if uh, earth is moving in ether with velocity v and the light is uh, light the speed of light is c and for calculations let me take the length l1 and l2 the distance of vertical mirror and horizontal mirror same as l and for horizontal case light is traveling to a to c and then c to a so the time taken from distance for distance l it will be uh, time equal to distance by velocity but velocity of light is c minus b when it is moving with uh, in the direction of earth and when it, it is moving in opposite direction then it will be c plus b so t1 will be l divided by c minus b plus l divided by c plus b and if you solve it uh, by lcm then it will it is 2 lc divided by c square minus b square and c square is common it is 1 minus b square by c square in denominator and we can take it in numerator with minus uh, power so 2 l by c 1 minus b square by c square to the power minus 1 and this can be expanded using the binomial theorem binomial theorem was 1 plus x to the power n equal to 1 plus n x plus n x square by factorial 2 plus something for uh, other higher terms but for this x for a small x we can write 1 to plus x to the power n equal to 1 plus n x because here in our case b by c is very small so b square by c square is also very small much less than 1 so we can see that we can write it 1 plus n x so n is minus 1 and x is b minus b square by c square so it will be 2l by c 1 plus b square by c square after using this uh, approximation so t1 means the time uh, for horizontal uh, travel t1 is equal to this and now we will find the t2 for the vertical motion by the light wave so vertically it goes up and down uh, if it, there is no movement of earth then it was simply 2l divided by c but here we will see that it the whole setup is moving with the earth and that's why the this vertical mirror have traveled also with the earth and in that case the light is traveling a distance c into t2 if t2 is the time for vertical path so this uh, distance a d dash a dash is uh, the light speed of light is c and the time is t2 c into t2 and a d dash and d dash a dash it is half so it will be c t2 by 2 
this distance is ct2 by 2 and this uh, vertical is l and in uh, this uh, this point uh, earth is moving in this direction with velocity v so in t2 time a is traveled to a prime and this uh, horizontal movement is b into t2 so a o is b t2 by 2 and now we have used we can use the pythagoras theorem to find the value of t2 so it is b t2 by 2 it is c t2 by 2 and this is l so using pythagoras theorem a d dash square equal to a o base square plus perpendicular square using pythagoras theorem it is c t2 by 2 square equal to b t2 by 2 whole square plus l square and from if we rearrange the terms t2 square c square minus b square by 4 equal to l square and if we take the under root t2 will be 2l divided by under root c square minus b square and if we take c square as common so it will be 2l by c 1 minus b square by c square under root so and uh, if you take it in numerator it will be power minus 1 by 2 again we use the same uh, theorem 1 minus b square to the power minus half equal to 1 uh, suppose 1 plus x to the power n it will it will be 1 plus nx so if you, we use it it will be 1 plus b square by uh, 2c square and in this case t2 is equal to 2l by c 1 plus b square by 2c square this is equation number 7 and t1 was calculated uh, in uh, last slide that t1 was 2l by c 1 plus b square by c square so there is some difference in time t1 and time t2 so it is not zero t1 minus t2 is not zero so that's why there is some time difference and it will create some kind of part difference and that's why we are getting the interference pattern the uh, it was observed by the michelson and morley at in the configuration one that there was some fringe pattern was there and now when they rotate the whole setup by 90 degree then there was the time difference was in horizontal path and vertical path was similar but it was in minus sign because now the vertical mirror have become the horizontal and horizontal become vertical mirror so delta t prime in this case was minus 2l by c b square by 2c square and the total time difference on this whole rotation of 90 degree we denote it by delta capital delta t it means delta t one in first configuration minus delta t prime it was after rotation so it was it will give us 2l by c b square by c square if we add these two terms and this difference in time will result in some optical part difference and the optical part difference means there will be some shift in the fringes and we know the optical part difference means because light is traveling with some velocity v and v into delta t will give us the dip, dip, uh, distance and this distance is known as the part difference c into delta t will give us part difference and it is denoted by this symbol delta and initially if the fringe was like this due to this part difference the, there will be a little bit change in the fringes or wave so if optical part difference of lambda or one wavelength is there then there is the shift of one fringe on the telescope and if we have the part difference delta and if we divide it by lambda one fringe then we will get the total shift in number of fringes delta n will be delta by lambda 2l v square by c square lambda and it gives us the values if you put l equal to 11 meter and lambda equal to 5500 angstrom or 5.5 into 10 to the power minus 7 meter and v by c ratio means the velocity of speed, uh, earth divided by velocity of light it gives us 3 into 10 to the power 4 divided by 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second it gives 10 to the power minus 4 and then delta n is uh, 2l means 22 into b square by c square is 10 to the power minus 4 whole square divided by 5.5 into 10 to the power minus 7 meter and it gives us 0.4 so they were expecting a shift of 0.4 fringes their experiments so this is again the summary whatever we have discussed uh, this capital delta t is like this and part difference is c into delta t and this gives delta n the part difference divided by lambda 
and it gives delta n if we put the values here uh, b uh, the speed of earth speed of light l1 l2 11 meter lambda 5500 angstrom then uh, delta n comes uh, around 0.4 fringe so this uh, shift around point fringe was expected theoretically but they observed a very small shift of around 0.01 fringes so they could not detect any reasonable shift in the fringes when the interferometer was rotated through 90 degree which was expected but after several repetitions in uh, they have repeated this experiment in different seasons different locations even the north pole and south pole they have done uh, uh, the experiment with all possibilities and they didn't observe any kind of shift what whatever was expected they were object or uh, observing very small 0.01 and even less and so conclusion of this experiment that they got the negative results because there was no fringe shift as it was expected and then they concluded that the hypothesis of the stationary ether is incorrect and even after several repetitions they found null results so that's why their conclusion was ether does not exist so this whole experiment was a failed experiment but other scientists got some idea from it and they tried to explain this uh, why this ex uh, experiment was failed so we will discuss in next next lecture about it in next lecture how this was explained and other how this other scientist uh, explained this negative result so thanks for watching this video and if you have any queries or suggestion then please write in the comment box and our previous video was based on galilean transformation and next video will be on lorentz transformations and velocity additions and if you are new to this channel then please subscribe this channel thank you very much